Tell you what, we'll talk about that. All right, your calls. I got Cody. I got Mike hanging on. Back to you guys in a second on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Our friend from the Athletic joins us, Stephen Holder. All right, uh, Dave Dugaliamo. What happened here? I mean, we've seen a variety of things. I know he was a dude that had a a special. You had to. I mean, he was, you know, acquired taste. I guess is is how yeah. we should put it here. What what went down? What is the true story as to why they decided to punt him out, considering the type of year that O line had? So, nothing I have heard so far uh, suggests that. This has anything to do with, you know, for example, Denzel Good, right? Mm-hmm. Which was, which is one of the things that uh, that's been, you know, bandied about today. Um, now, the one thing I would say is that, <laughs> on that note, is they knew everybody in the league, everybody in the NFL knows who who Good was and is uh, because he's been the same guy yeah. for twenty years, right? Everybody, everybody's known that. So. I don't think necessarily. I don't think that necessarily had a, an impact on on this decision because that was not a surprise to anybody. If that was, if that were an issue, then maybe Chris Bauer doesn't even have him there in the first place, you know. So uh, I really don't think it was that. I just think it was. This is really a philosophical sort of thing, you know. He didn't. He was not a uh, Frank Reich hire. We know that uh, he was definitely a McDaniel's guy, and not like Eberflus, okay, who's on defense, right? This is a this is a guy on offense who was not one of his guys, right? And I think that's I think that matters. I think that that actually plays a role here. You know, it's got to. You know, you got to you, having having a offensive line coach when you're the play caller or the offensive coordinator, play caller, what have you. Having an offensive line coach who you are in tune with is critical. It's really critical because if you don't have that synergy between you, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause problems. I mean, you're going to have different ways of doing things and different philosophical approaches to things, and, and that may not sound like a big deal, but when you get out there, and, and this is a game of inches, as we know, every little bit matters, and you just really have to have that. And, and I, what I've told people today is look at – the working relationship that Nick Sirianni and Frank Reich have. And why do they have that? Do they have a history together? They work together. They understand each other. Uh, They are very, very, very like-minded. And that's part of the reason they work so well together, you know? So, I mean, that stuff matters. And so I don't think this is a matter of not being a good coach. I will tell you, I talked to people around the league today, even people who hate the guy, okay, people who hate the guy, will tell you, oh, yeah, he's a damn good coach. So no one disagrees on that, and up to and including Frank Reich, I suspect. So it's not that. Yeah. It's, just, it's more philosophical. Thing. Well, I mean, that, that's, that is, I, I bet, your garden variety feeling for offensive line coaches around the NFL, right? I mean, they're all kind of built out of the same mold here. I, I've actually, it's, it's, a, it's funny you say that, because uh, of all the quirkiest coaches I've ever met, just about all of them were offensive line coaches. There used to be... <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy who works for John Gruden when I covered him in Tampa, Bill Muir, who may ring a bell to some old timers. I mean, this guy, this guy was a nut. Okay, and I, I remember doing a story on a on a young offensive lineman once who fashioned himself as an as an amateur rapper in the off season. Well, Bill Muir read that story and he ripped him a new one. He said, "I don't want to hear you talking about the hip hop during the season ever again." <laughs> It was an innocent story, and the guy ripped the kid a new one over this. I was like, man, this is crazy. But my point is, yeah, offensive line coaches, they are definitely their own breed. And uh, I guess they are, I guess by nature, they have to be a little crazy maybe. Well, you brought up Nut, so I had to bring – this has just occurred to me. And Stephen Holder, the athletics on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline, I, I saw, this, saw this over the weekend, and I forget where it came from. I can't remember who to attribute this report to. But was it true, before that they settled in on Chris Ballard, did the Colts reach out and get denied conversation to that nut, Eric DaCosta, of the Ravens organization a couple of different times? Is that accurate? You're talking about when, when it was. Ballard, I think it was before. I think it was before Ballard. Yeah, it was before Ballard. Yeah, you know, I 
I don't recall for sure. Uh, that, that guy is a, that guy is a red ass nut right there. <laughs> I and I think you would know. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know the answer to that, but I would tell you that it doesn't that wouldn't surprise me because obviously you know a guy who has learned at the feet of Ozzy Newsom is going to be attractive. So yeah. I get it from that standpoint, and uh, I wouldn't imagine that the that the Ravens would have been too happy to lose him because I think that was their succession plan all the way. So, uh, yeah, I don't know that, though. That's interesting. I, I'm curious now. I always love it because uh, to apologize to Chris Hagan, uh, Ozzy Newsom sent an autographed picture of himself to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Ozzy's a great-looking guy, so I guess, uh, I guess uh, you know, Chris should uh, – Take it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do to people around here. They get mad at me. I'm going to send them an autographed picture of me. Yeah. Yeah. That, means that could that could come off you know several different ways, my friend. Is it, is, is it good, Stephen Older of the Athletics on the Eddie Moore Automotive Group hotline? This occurred to me when you mentioned nut, and I thought, all right, we'll go, we'll go here. I, um, top of the off season list, and and the Colts are unlike any other team going in because of smart moves. They have the cash. They have the flexibility, they have selections, and they have, knowing the growth of the 2018 draft was so great, they have a lot of flexibility to do things. In your mind, where does it start? Well, you know, I I think, first of all, one point that I think is important is that, you know, when you're talking about Chris Ballard, he's never going to pigeonhole himself and say, well, we're going to go out and we're going to fix this position, unless it's the offensive line. That's probably the one exception, the trenches in general, right? But he's not going to say, all right, this year, come hell or high water, we're getting us a receiver. Okay, that's that's not how he operates. And that's not how you should operate, right? I mean, he is looking at a holistic approach. We're going to upgrade. We want every position to be as strong as possible. And so, you know, in this past draft, outside of Quentin Nelson, I think you looked at what they did. They saw where the strengths of the draft were, and they just picked good players, right? And, you know, I think that was a, an approach that was very successful. So he's going to continue doing that. But if you did try to pinpoint me or if you tried to bog me down, what I'd say is uh, obviously I think the pass rush, if you, can, if you can find a difference maker, I don't mean just a body, but if you can find a difference maker – well, hell, do it. But I'm not optimistic. I mean, where do you find that guy, right? I think it's the draft is really where they're going to have to, to find him. And and in the draft, sometimes it's not as obvious, right? I mean, you'll have to kind of – got to be smart. you got to be better than everybody else, and that's hard to do. So, pass rusher, if you can find a guy with some freak in him, great. And outside of that, I, I think you need some dynamic play at wide receiver. You just do. And – We've seen T.Y. Hilton have too much put on his shoulders, and it was really hard to watch T.Y. at the end of the season. I mean, guys shouldn't have been out there, okay? But I, I'm not knocking him for being out there. I think he's a warrior for doing it. But in any other situation, that guy shouldn't have been out there. But he was out there because, A, he's a competitor, and, B, damn it, he knew he needed to be out there, okay, yeah. because they had no threats. And so, look, when Dontrell Inman can walk in the door and become – essentially down the stretch, your number two guy, and he played well. And don't get me wrong. I like what Don Terrell Inman gave them, and I think that was really missing, you know, somebody to make those tough catches over the middle. So thank God he showed up. But my point is when he can show up and, and just do that right out of the gate and no one else, you know, contend for that spot, that's not a good sign. So there, there's going to be a shakeup in that wide receiver spot, I think. You know, Brian Grant. Uh, is he back? I, I don't know about that. I think that would really – the only way he comes back, I think, is probably if Frank Reich demands it. And I don't know that – I, I think Don Trell has earned a spot next year on this team. I know he's 30. Yeah. But with his prior relationship with Reich and Sirianni and the job he did in half of the season, do you think he's earned a spot here? I'd bring him back. I mean, he's not going to cost you much. He's not going to cost you much of anything, really. I mean, the guy was on the street, so – what is your competition for him? There may be more now, but but they can keep him. They can they can get him back, I would think, if they want him. And he's got he's in a good spot with a coach he loves, right? Okay, him and Frank Reich have history and Nick, and Nick Sirianni as well. So it's good for him to be here. He's in a good spot where they trust him. He they know him. He knows them. So familiarity is going to be an incentive 
for Dontrell Hillman to come back if the Colts want him back. And and for the Colts, the incentive is obvious because he's a guy who can give them something they don't have. I mean, T.Y. Hilton can't make the plays that Dontrell Inman can make. They're different players, right? So I, I think he gives them something they don't have. Now, Chester Rogers is an interesting case. He's a restricted free agent. They can bring him back for not much money. I say bring him back and then you see where the chips fall. But they're going to continue, or at least they should, continue to try to upgrade around him in spite of whoever comes back. They need to continue to try to get better at that spot. I think they will. I'd agree with you. I, and then you look at the uh, free agency um, wide receiver-wise, and there's nothing dynamic about that That's at all. Wrong. When the list That's is wrong. top of Golden Tate, I I'm, I don't know. I can't get away from this thought, and I know that they covet draft picks like nobody's business, and if you're good, you do. But they have flexibility to do some things if a wide receiver that is dynamic might be available someplace. The need is there. And I'm not just necessarily talking about Antonio Brown, but you don't know what may happen come this off season and how teams may decide to go a different direction. So, I mean, I, don't, I haven't put that to bed as being a possibility. Have you? Well, no. I mean, look, at the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, there, there's always – possibilities that that we don't consider that end up coming to fruition right i mean did we anticipate eric ebron would have been on the street of course not right they gave him the fifth year option and once they exercise that generally speaking you keep that guy right so no one ever expected him to fall out of the sky but he did and so who is next year's eric ebron it may not be a receiver but i think they're they're going to find the next eric ebron and the next Danico Autry. That's their style, man. And I'll tell you something else. I made this point earlier. This is something to remember. Eric Ebron is a guy, guys of that profile, guys who were on a team but cut after the start of the new league year, those guys don't count toward the compensatory pick formula. Don't discount the compensatory pick formula. They're about to get a fourth-round pick for Dante Moncrief. Okay, Dante freaking Moncrief. They're about to get a fourth-round pick for this guy. That's huge. That's Naheem Hines. So they like guys who, because if, if listeners don't understand how that works, the compensatory picks are determined by your gains and losses in free agency. So Eric Ebron doesn't count as a gain in free agency because of the way they acquired him. So they love that, and that's a big thing for Chris Ballard. It's also – I'm getting way off the subject here, but it's also uh, a factor in the Jacoby Brissett uh, sort of situation because if they lose to Kobe Brissett uh, after this year, they'll get a nice little comp- compensatory pick for him, depending on how much he gets paid. And he's quarterback, so he's going to get a ton of money. So you, you so, think you think that there's a high level of interest in him out there right now? In Jacoby? Yeah. Uh, I think there's definitely interest. Yes. Now, I actually. I feel less certain that they're going to trade him, though. I, I don't think Chris Ballard was playing a game yesterday. I know Chris Ballard well, and he doesn't play games. He doesn't, you know, do uh, smoke screens and the whole not- – that's not his thing. I mean, I know I'm, I'm like you. I've been doing this a long time, and I am sort of programmed to assume that people are screwing with me, right? <laughs> but Chris Ballard doesn't do that. I'm telling you, and he really meant what he said about Jacoby in terms of how he feels about him. Like, he doesn't want Jacoby to just go be a quarterback in some terrible system and a terrible organization. Like, that matters to him, right? He really means that. So I actually feel I feel pretty strongly today that there's a good chance Jacoby ain't going anywhere. I really do feel that. Stephen Holder of the Athletics, got all your latest stuff if you want to check him out, and you're probably already doing so at the Athletic on Twitter and more. And he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. It's always a pleasure. And I was I was at the stadium on Saturday, and uh, every time the Colts did something well, uh, we got pelted with ice balls. It was lucky it only happened like three or four times. <laughs> I'm, I'm relatively certain. Now, the press box is pretty high. But I'm relatively certain I saw a Chiefs cheerleader got – get nailed right in the face <laughs> you know and that they're not snowballs there's nothing that those are like throwing no. rocks there that's no that's, no yeah. no she had a reaction to it that looked very serious and i wish someone would have followed up on it but she got she definitely got hit in the head and head area 
and uh, she kind of wobbled off to the side, and they were tending to her. So I hope she's okay. But that, that's messed up, man. I mean, they were. It was. It was bad. Those things, it man. was bad. And every time they announced it, it just, like, made it happen more and motivate right. to throw more. And, and you saw there's a, there was a replay where Rigo was punting, and there was one that landed mm-hmm. right at his foot. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't cool, man. I I was a little disappointed in that. Look, I mean, I get that you're always going to have some bad apples, but I mean, come on, man. Like after a while, I mean, you've been warned, and they were throwing people out of the stadium, and they're still throwing them. I mean, like, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Like, just have a good time, enjoy your team winning the game, and call it a day. All right, Stephen. Always a pleasure. Thanks, buddy. All right, my man. Stephen Holder on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Mike, top of the hour, and anything goes at 6. Should be fun, and your chance to get some uh, tickets to see The Who as well. Back with you next. And now, an ad from Dad. Oh, yeah, just this one line, right? All right, here we go.